10 Deadliest Woman Serial Killers of All Time Most serial killers tend to be men, and the victims are of the times strangers. This list, however, contains only women who turned themselves into monsters to torture and kill people, including their own children. Brace yourself for the top 10 most evil women serial killers ever to live in the United States. But before we proceed, please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for notifications of new videos. Here are 10 Deadliest Women Serial Killers of All Time. 10. Leonarda Cianciulli, Three Deaths Leonarda Cianciulli was an Italian serial killer who murdered three women in Correggio between 1939 and 1940, and used their bodies to make soap and tea cakes leading people and the media to nickname her the Soap Maker of Correggio. In 1939, Giuseppe, the eldest son of Cianciulli, was to join the Italian army in preparation for World War II. Given Giuseppe was her favorite child, she was determined to do anything to protect him. Since she was a fortune teller herself, she decided to do human sacrifices. She found three women, neighbors, who used to visit her for help. Faustina Setti, Francesca Salvi, and Virginia Cassiopo. One thing led to another, and she managed to drug and kill her victims with an axe. Cassiopo's sister-in-law grew suspicious, and reported her fears to the police. During the interrogation, she confessed to the murders, providing detailed accounts of the crime. She was found guilty and sentenced to 30 years in prison, and three years in a criminal asylum. Cien Chiuli died of cerebral apoplexy in the Women's Criminal Asylum in Pozzuoli on October 15, 1970. 9. Janie Lou Gibbs, Five Deaths Janie Lou Gibbs was an American serial killer from Cordell, Georgia, who killed her three sons, a grandson, and her husband by poisoning them with arsenic in 1966 and 1967. In 1965, Gibbs committed her first murder, poisoning her husband Marvin by putting arsenic into his dinner. Whilst he was unwell in the hospital, she brought him homemade soup containing yet more poison. After her husband's death, Gibbs was supported by the local church community. She later donated some of her husband's life insurance money to the church. Eight months after the death of Gibbs' husband, she poisoned her youngest son, also named Marvin. Gibbs was not suspected of any wrongdoing, and she again donated a large portion of her life insurance payout to the local church. In January 1967, another one of Gibbs' sons, 16-year-old Lester, died suddenly. Again, Gibbs donated life insurance money to the church. Gibbs now only had one son left, 19-year-old Robert. Robert had recently fathered a child named Raymond with his wife, and Gibbs was seen to be delighted that she had become a grandmother. Soon, Raymond became sick and died suddenly, followed only a month later by his father. Following the sudden deaths of a previously healthy young man and his infant son, the family physician became suspicious and referred the case to the state crime lab. An autopsy on Robert found that he had ingested a fatal amount of arsenic, Gibbs was arrested for the murder on Christmas Day, and the bodies of her husband and three sons were exhumed. Autopsies conducted in the cemetery revealed each of the five murdered members of the Gibbs household had arsenic present in their bodies. Gibbs was initially found mentally unfit to stand trial, and was confined to a mental institution where she worked as a cook. Later, however, she did stand trial, and was given five life sentences. She remained imprisoned until 1999, when she was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and was released into the custody of her sister. She died in 2010 in a nursing home in Douglasville, Georgia. 8. Lita Southard, Six Death Lita Southard is considered as a pioneer in female serial killing in the United States. She was accused of using arsenic poisoning, rat poison, to murder six people, her four husbands, a brother-in-law, and her daughter, in order to collect life insurance money. 
Twin Falls chemist Earl Dooley began to study the deaths surrounding her. He soon discovered that Ed and Bob Dooley were murdered by arsenic poisoning, leading Prosecutor Frank to exhume the body of three of Lita's husbands, Lita's three-year-old daughter, and Lita's brother-in-law. It was discovered that some of the bodies contained traces of arsenic. All four of Lita's husbands had held a life insurance policy where they listed her as the beneficiary. Lita was able to collect over $7,000 over the years from the deaths of her first three husbands. After a six-week trial, Lita Southard was found guilty and sentenced from 10 years to life in an Idaho prison. But later she died of a heart attack on February 5th of 1958 in Salt Lake City, Utah. Her body was interred at Sunset Memorial Park in Twin Falls, Idaho. 7. Eileen Carol Warnos, 7 Deaths Eileen Carol Warnos was a woman serial killer who murdered seven men in Florida between 1989 and 1990. Although confessing to the crimes, she claimed she was acting in self-defense because the victims had either raped her or attempted to rape her while she was working as a prostitute. Even before Wernos was arrested as a murderer, she had a criminal record of DUI, assault, and disturbing the peace. She also has a record of armed robbery, car theft, resisting arrest, and obstruction of justice. But those offenses were not enough. Between 1989 and 1990, she killed seven men. Richard Mallory, age 51. David Spears, age 43. Charles Karskadden, age 40, Peter Seams, age 65, Troy Burris, age 50, Charles Dick Humphreys, age 56, and Walter Gino Antonio, age 62. The judge and jury did not buy her alibi that all the murders were committed in self-defense. She was convicted and sentenced to death for six of the murders, and was executed by the state of Florida by lethal injection on October 9, 2002. 6. Marie No, 8 Deaths Marie No is an American serial killer convicted in June 1999 of killing eight of her own children between 1949 and 1968. Having had no proof yet, the mysterious cause of death of the innocent children was then attributed to sudden infant death syndrome. Suspicion led authorities to become interested in the case after the publication of the 1997 book, The Death of Innocence, about a New York woman named Juanita Hoyt, and an investigative article, Cradle to Grave by Stephen Fried, that appeared in the April 1998 issue of Philadelphia Magazine. Stephen Fried turned over his investigation results to the Philadelphia Police Department in March 1998. That's when Miss No admitted to suffocating four of her children. She stated that she could not remember what happened to the other four who died under similar circumstances. She was charged with first-degree murder in August 1998. Miss No admitted to eight counts of second-degree murder, and she was sentenced in June 1999 to 20 years probation and psychiatric study with the first five years under house arrest. It was later revealed No suffered from mixed personality disorder. 5. Luis Vermilia, 9 Deaths Luis Vermilia was a black widow whose activity spanned the turn of the 20th century. Light was shed on her murders only after she resorted to murdering outside of her immediate family, beginning with the death of policeman Arthur Bissonnette. The string of homicides began in 1893, when Vermilia claimed the life of her first husband, Fred Brinkham, while living on their farm near Barrington, Illinois. The coroner ruled Brinkham's death to be attributed to a heart attack. Brinkham left behind six children, two of whom met similar fates to their father shortly after his death. Following his death, she inherited $5,000 from a life insurance policy that Brinkham had named her as beneficiary of. Vermilia moved to Chicago in 1906. Around this time, Vermilia remarried to a man named Charles Vermilia, aged 59. Three years later, he died, apparently victim to sudden illness. 
Her stepson Henry Vermilia followed his father in death shortly after quarreling with Luis over the sale of the Crystal Lake estate. No suspicions arose after the deaths, and coincidence was blamed. Now Vermilia began poisoning acquaintances. Jason Rupert, a railroad fireman, fell ill after dining with Vermilia on January 15, 1910. He died two days later. In February 1910, Vermilia married Richard Smith, a train conductor and boarder at her home. On March 11, 1910, two days after eating a meal prepared by Vermilia, he met a similar fate to Vermilia's prior boarder. His death was determined to be caused by gastritis. Vermilia was arrested and then released. Per the request of Vermilia's attorney, all charges were dropped. Vermilia led a quiet life following the dismissal of her charges, as no further documentation of her exists in local papers past this point. It is estimated that Vermilia amassed a total of $15,000 from the nine deaths. 4. Nanny Doss, 11 Deaths Born Nancy Hazel, Nanny Doss was an American serial killer convicted of murdering 11 people between the 1920s and 1954. Four husbands, two children, her two sisters, her mother, a grandson, and a mother-in-law. After her fifth husband died in a small hospital in Tulsa, Oklahoma, police started investigating the mysterious reasons behind the deaths. Nanny Doss finally confessed to the murders in October 1954. The prosecution found her mentally fit for trial. The state of Oklahoma centered its case only on Samuel Doss. She pleaded guilty on May 17, 1955, and was sentenced to life imprisonment. The state did not pursue the death penalty due to her gender. Doss was never charged with the other deaths. However, Nanny Doss died of leukemia in the hospital ward of the Oklahoma State Penitentiary in 1965. What the state did not want to do, cancer did. She died after a long battle with leukemia. 3. Bell Gunnis, 14 Deaths Born Brynhild Paul Statter Storset, November 11, 1859, Bell Gunnis was a Norwegian-American serial killer who was active in Illinois and Indiana between 1884 and 1908. Gunnis is thought to have killed at least 14 people, most of whom were men she enticed to visit her rural Indiana property on the promise of marriage, while some sources speculate her involvement in as many as 40 murders. Brynhild Paul Statter Storset, Bell Gunnis, was born in Selbu, Norway on November 11, 1859, and moved to the U.S. in 1881. Her criminal activities came to light in April 1908, when the Gunnis farmhouse in Laporte, Indiana, burned to the ground. In the ruins, authorities found the bodies of a headless adult woman, initially identified as Bell Gunnis, and her three children. Further investigation unearthed the partial remains of at least 11 additional people on the Gunnis property. Gunnis seemingly died in a fire in 1908, but it's popularly believed that she faked her own death. Her actual fate is unconfirmed. 2. Bertha Gifford, 17 Deaths When it comes to most evil serial killers, Bertha Alice Williams Graham Gifford comes in second position. She was a farm wife in rural Catawissa, Missouri, during the early 1900s who was accused of murdering 17 members of the local community. Gifford was known in her community for her cooking skills and caring for sick neighbors and relatives, but she has a dark skill that the community had not known yet, until 1928, when she was arrested and charged with the murders of three people. After numerous deaths in the community, authorities became suspicious. The exhumation and post-mortem exams of Edward Brindley, Elmer, and Lloyd Shamel revealed large amounts of arsenic. Although she fatally poisoned 17 members, Gifford was put on trial for these murders only. Bertha was found not guilty by reason of insanity and committed to a mental institution where she remained until her death in 1951. However, most historians and family members believe that Gifford might actually have killed more than 17 people over a period of 21 years. 
1. Jane Toppin, 31 Deaths Jane Toppin is the worst female serial killer in American history. She confessed to having murdered 31 people in 1901. In fact, her goal was to have killed more people, helpless people, than any other man or woman who ever lived. In 1885, Toppin started a residency as a nurse at Cambridge Hospital. She underwent a dark work by doing experiments on her patients with morphine and atropine. She would alter their prescribed dosages to see what it did to their nervous systems. She also spent a lot of time alone with those patients, making up fake charts and medicating them to drift in and out of consciousness, and even get into bed with them, claiming she derived a sexual thrill from patients being near death, coming back to life, and then dying again. After police finally arrested Toppin in 1902, she had confessed to 31 murders. Ironically, on June 23rd, in the Barnstable County Courthouse, she was found not guilty by reason of insanity and committed for life in the Taunton Insane Hospital. Thank you for watching till the end. Kindly like the video and subscribe to the channel to help us grow our presence on YouTube. Remember to press the bell icon for notifications of new uploads.